Good morning. This is Daniel. And Ronnie. With Park Talks. Park it. Let's talk about it. Confess and be free. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. You will make mistakes. You will act outside of God's will and even against it and immediately know in your heart you have failed. But you understand that the Lord doesn't reveal your sins in order to shame you or make you feel miserable. Though those may be natural byproducts of what you've done, rather he does it so you can be free. If you have ever have loved one who is an alcoholic or drug addict, you understand the concept. You would do anything to see your loved one liberated of the habit that is both controlling and destroying him or her. The same true for Jesus. His desire to free you of the devastating hold that sin has on your life, that's why he, he's always you're welcoming, welcoming you with open arms when you return to him. So when you fail, remember that God wants you back and confess that he is right about what you've done and trust him to teach you how to turn away from it forever. Jesus, I know the sins you are pinpointing in my heart. I agree with you and I want freedom from them. Teach me how to walk in the ways that honor you. Amen. And it says, my hope is in Jesus because he always works to set me free. Now, greater. What does greater? I don't mean like grating the cheese. Greater. Think about it. The one word greater. Am I greater than you are? I was, that's what I thought at first. Yeah, Less yeah. than, greater than. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's than. pretty normal to grab that. So then if I'm greater than you, I'm better than you. I mean, continue, we continue, we're going to hear a real haughty spirit coming up. <laughs> a right. lot of ego starting to squeak out, right? Yeah. You're older. I'm I'm younger, so I'm great. <laughs> yeah, or I'm older, so I'm smarter. <laughs> I'm better. I've done more than you. No. Where's the love in that? <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, that's called the absence of love right there. All right. The who's greater than the next person? Is the president or the king of a country greater than those under the country, in the country? No. Mm -mm. What what I did do, and I read a book on fasting. I got to the first chapter, and it talked about being humility, like fasting and praying for someone else to see breakthrough and lessening yourself like Jesus did. Absolutely. So I think that kind of applies to even this. Yes. Like lessening myself and then seeing that person maybe make a breakthrough in their life where they were suffering. Yeah. Fasting doesn't have to be for you. A lot of times no. it can be intercessory fasting and prayer, intercessory prayer, where you're actually fasting for somebody else with a breakthrough in their life, and they don't even need to know about it ever. Right. You and, and God know. That's Yeah, that's humility. That's bringing yourself to, you're lowering yourself to, to yeah, to put yourself where even, I guess, even what Paul went through, even in prison and that, and still mm -hmm. pray, you know, pray for me, even though I'm in these chains, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm a prisoner in chains. But even Paul tells us, you know, like in, uh, in, in Romans there, Romans 7, I believe that people are, are not just in prisoner in chains, but I believe a lot of people are prisoner in thought. Yes. I've been Like locked up free in of their that. own thought, and they are the only one that's right. Well, I feel like heart and a mind, right? Like your mind, like yeah. having that stronghold maybe mentally. A hundred percent. To where you're, we talked about truth. Yep. Knowledge and versus truth. A lot of that does come from your mind. It comes, comes from, from your knowledge. From, yeah. And when you test the knowledge, you go, well, that ain't right. That ain't true. Right. That ain't nothing true what I've been living. Now, if you have a truth and you've lived that truth, let's make one up. Um, you ever wore Mickey Mouse boots? The big black military looking ones that are like really like air had, gap in there. I had a pair. You had a pair of ones? Uh -huh. Those stupid things are warm, aren't they? Yeah. You can't make your feet cold. No. Or wet. Mm -hmm. That's truth. Now, how do you know that? It's too warm. You lived it. I lived it. Yeah. You experienced it. There's no way anybody's got I mean, if you put ice inside those boots, yeah, now you're gonna violate that truth. But you have to manipulate it to get there. Right. Right. So if that's a truth. You've lived it. You've experienced it. How can I change that? I can't. Oh. I still have the, those thoughts. I still have the memories. So now your so. truth is greater than mine. 
You're right, though. You're absolutely right. Now, it's, it, <laughs> this is just thought for consideration. Mm -hmm. Now, your truth is greater than mine for one reason. You've experienced it, and I haven't. Okay? Let's just say, like, you come home from military. You come home from overseas. Yeah. Wartime. Yeah, we've been there, yeah. Somebody who you go through the process of... of this and that, you go to a therapist, you go to a psychologist. People have never even tied combat boots on somebody else's feet, let alone put them on their they own They might have feet. watched a movie. They might have put themselves Went in the Went through college, got some book smarts, yeah. maybe dealt with a few other vets and heard some stories. Or had family members. That that's had. the best they got. Yeah. Now you talk to that same, we'll say doctor, because I talked to one at the VA and there was actually a, a doctor of psychiatry. They were prescribing all kinds of pills and stuff, and they figured these pills were going to help change me and fix me and get the head straight. Well, that was their truth, I guess, but in reality, it was nothing more than a lie. And if anything, only caused damage or hurt. Oh, my pain. goodness, so much. So I feel like I have... So much. Being lived through that, I have more knowledge than a psychiatrist. You do. <laughs> for, for particular situations, though, yeah. you have more practical experience truth and knowledge based on your real life experience right. their truth and knowledge is based on their real life experience which is dynamically different not opposite but different than yours you have boots on ground they have a picture of boots yeah. now if you ask them why you skip the fourth and fifth hole on your boots they wouldn't know but when you explain to them it's because it pinches in your foot when you do 25 mile road marches and leaves a raw spot on the top of your arch of your foot, mm -hmm. then you go, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start, well, if I ever own a pair of combat boots yeah. and maybe have to wear them, I might lace them that way, right. maybe. But I've never done a 25 mile road march so I couldn't figure the reason I'm trying to learn this special way of lacing them. You know there's a way that uh, runners lace their shoes versus the common Joe who doesn't run? And they hold better to your feet. They're easier on and off. Yeah. And they make the shoes last longer. You know those two holes up near the top that are real close together? Yeah. Yeah, those are there for a reason so they can be laced in this particular pattern. You won't see it in mine. I use bungee laces. Truth is, tying shoes sucks. I'd rather bungee laces. <laughs> All right, so... <clears throat> Is something greater than the other? I guess it's based on your truth. But does it really matter? You say matter. Doesn't matter. It's, you go. it's weird. It's wild you say that because I was listening to a sermon yesterday talking about when we think of God, do we think of him as a as our enemy or do we think of him as our loving father? And do we because think of him as like a judge waiting up there to hit you with the gavel? Yeah. Or a dad that slapped you around and he was drunk one night? They said the way you perceive it, if you perceive them in love, you're going to show love and you're going to, it's that, it's when you, they even said scientifically proven MRI, when, when people are praying, you see the gray matter, you see this yeah. start to move in yeah. the person's mind. I started listening. I started really hearing about, thinking about it. I'm like, whoa, that kind of blew me away. You know, the major distortion that I've seen in the church is everybody talks to God like, you know, refers to God as a father, our father, our father who art in heaven, all that, father, father, father. What if you had a really crappy life and your father was actually a dirtbag? Whoa. Now what truth are you carrying into that word? Right. What if he was physically abusive? What if he just went out for a pack of cigarettes 35 years ago and never came back? Maybe not even physically, but mentally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just checked out emotionally. Yeah. No emotions at all. I know some know people who are so disconnected with their kids, it's un flicking real it's unreal like adult males who have kids that literally communicate for all types of life experiences and growth points outside of the family because there's nobody in there they trust enough to go to go to right. I haven't felt that at church sometimes. how the boy's gonna go to the mom they can't. Mom ain't never been there. she would never been a 15-year-old or 18-year-old young male. No. How can the girls go to the dad in those situations? They can't. Mm -mm. Because we go back to the VA. How's dad going to teach about menstrual menstrual cycle? <laughs> he ain't even built for it. No. Does dad know the proper way to go buy a bra? Now, I understand there's, there's, there's situations where mother passed away earlier, dad right. passed away early. 
Those are unique situations. I'm talking about where they abandon either physically, emotionally, or mentally. The emotional abandonment scars people for years. And then by that, you have unforgiveness. You have oh, all those. Man. You have all everything's those so distorted too now. Right? You don't know who to trust. Who? To no believe. love. No What's love? love? Love's conditional. I'm not good enough to be loved. Right. This is where suicides come out of. Right. All this because an adult, male and or female, decided that they were greater than what was going on in life around them, greater than their own kids, and just walked out because they chose they were unhappy. Patricia, don't you think through those, I would even say trials, when you're going through that, maybe that unhappiness that you lean in and you trust in God's plan? And not just that, <laughs> trust the person you committed trust, your life to. Exactly, because from that comes growth and strength. Yeah. And, and oh, that. man. You know, if, <clears throat> if you and me go for a run, we're going to do a marathon, right? The marathon's 26.1 miles. No, 26.2. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we're only going to go 26. How many marathons have we done? No. Mm -hmm. None. Didn't get ready. Sorry. All that practice, training, all that long run. So you get in a relationship and you spend time, you know, dating and courting and engaged. And then you get up to the marriage point And two years later, you're just not happy anymore. And you just, I quit. I'll start over with somebody else. It'll be easier. What if the two of you adults just decided to quit freaking casting your own opinion against each other, attacking each other, standing up behind a, a, a man or a woman of your word, and living truth, love, and harmony, and bringing harmony instead of attitude, opinion, contention, complaining? Mm -hmm. Well, I told you. Well, I'm an adult. Don't tell me. Ask me. Yeah. I mean, here's a unique flip. Anytime an adult tells you to do something and you're not a direct supervisor or your parent, don't. And when they ask you why, it's simple. You told me. Ask me, I'll do it. Tell me, and I won't. Perfect example of that this work, this this last work week. I was given a counsel at the end of the day. And if you want to do it, you can. Mm -hmm. So I heard those words, if. Mm -hmm. If you want. So I walked over and helped the other guy build his counsel. I didn't so want to. I didn't. <laughs> Went over to help the other guy build his council so at least got that one number done for the day. That way there was at least one number greater than <laughs> done for the day. He then later comes back and goes, uh, I want to get that council done. Um, at least get half of it done. I go, do we just, do we only do halves now? Half today, half tomorrow? I go, is it counted for today? Is it counted for tomorrow? Just asking him a question. He said, it doesn't count for today. Or it counts for today, tomorrow. So basically, you know, not yeah. building it. So I just questioned him, though, because I'm like, you said if the first time, and then you came back at me a little bit more aggressively. But was he a supervisor? Time. Group lead. Supervisor. Okay, so they both came then because I questioned their authority. Yeah, right, and that was the issue there. You you charged their, you challenged their authority, and they were just, I feel, being polite, saying if you, mm -hmm. and it's like giving you the option. So, you know, yeah. it's like telling the kids, if the bag is full, take trash out. If. If the bag is full. Oh, the bag's full. Yeah. Oh, the console needs built. Okay. Did you look at him and go, if you have a minute, I could use your help? Yeah. You're the lead. You do know this department, right? Mm -hmm. We can get it done twice as quick, actually faster if you help. Yeah. Got any time? No. Mm -hmm. Get half done today and half done tomorrow then. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. And I, I almost thought about, man, I should be the better man and just stay and get it done. That way I can start you fresh. But I just did what I was told. To an extent. Motivation comes under self-control. Right. So, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. Third John 1 John 1.4 I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. What truth? Now, as pastors preached this morning, when truth brings light, bring, truth points back to God, then there's a truth. But this question then appears. If I know that my car only holds 13.1 gallons of gas, it's not full at 12, and it's flooding at 14, that's a truth. Show me how that points back to God in any remote possibility. It doesn't, but it's still truth. So there's consideration in there. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts. 
and he knows everything. Yes. Okay, now that's our hearts condemning us. What does that actually say? What is that scripture actually saying? If our hearts condemn us, then we know that God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Okay, so let's read it this way. If our inner thoughts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our inner thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And there's that Romans 8, 1. And he knows everything. What's Romans 8, 1? There is therefore no condemnation for those in Christ yeah. Jesus. And where's the condemnation coming from? Inner thoughts. inner thoughts. Is that the spirit or the soul? Could be both. Yeah. Could be the spirit because God is greater than our inner thoughts or heart. Mm -hmm. And he knows everything. So it could be this Holy Spirit saying, this is not something right in your, in your whatever, mm -hmm. mind, action, word. Because we need to have truth in our thoughts, in our actions, and in our words. Right. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. You, dear children, are from God. And have overcome them. Overcome. This is 1 John 4 4. Let's see what the them is that they're referring to. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is from God. Is not from God. Is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. That's the spirit of the world. Mm -hmm. For he who is in you is greater than the he who is in the world. So by this, because I know we are to test every spirit, so even questioning? Beloved, do not test. believe every spirit, but yeah. test every yes. spirit to see whether they are from God. Test. 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 For many false prophets have gone into the world. Wow. Did we read about that in, what was that, John 18 today? Mm -hmm. And they were called what? Church leaders, yeah. Sadducees, Jewish leaders, Pharisees, all that. Well, church that, leaders of the day. And that's where a lot of... And politicians, by the way. And it did say in, in the Word like, that many would be led, could be led astray even through politics and through... Oh, absolutely. Up today at church, even. Absolutely. If you're focused on that and it's not glorifying Him, then... Well, there, there's a point where the, all of this glorifies God. And then there's a part of it also where it just gets you through life. Well, I've had com confusion. I know we talked about confusion in Park Talks before, but even questioning myself. Like, God, your spirit's in me, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. otherwise I don't think I would be here right now. But there are those that might have even fallen away. I don't even know. If they've just okay, let me ask you this. Do you think there's gas in my car right now? Yeah. How do you know that? It's, it's on. Mm -hmm. It's running. Mm -hmm. Are you a child of God? <laughs> I believe I am, yeah. Okay. Now, is he ever going to leave you or forsake you? No. Then why question? I know. I mean, that's something that, I can't question. That's that's where a lot of my hurt and a lot of my guilt... What if you change it this way? came from. Not God, are you in me? Spirit, are you in me? But is the spirit in this that I'm thinking, doing, or saying? Hmm. Spirit's in you. It just ain't coming out in the moment. Me and my wife get into it. You tell me the spirit of God's inside of that if we're mad at each other or having issues or harsh words or unloving. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. the spirit of God is still in both of us. Right. We're just not accessing it. But you know my car's got gas in it. Why? Because it's running. <laughs> if I had no gas, my car would not be operational. I know we've talked about it before. Very, very beginning of Park Talks is temple maintenance. Uh -huh. And I think it's ongoing throughout our lives in a way. It is. Or there's things that, yeah, you know, I even prayed, you know, God, I need my heart and my mind heal, keep on, <laughs> by, by, I guess, focusing on that and just to be able to do his, his work or maybe give somebody the right words to say or whatever. Like, I need to have the right heart and the right mind, I guess, or heart. Mm-hmm. 
to speak from. We accept human <clears throat> testimony, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Somebody tells us something, we're like, yeah, okay. But God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, when a testimony, what is a testimony other than you have been tested? Give me the word testimony without test in the beginning. Right? I take a, a physics class and I take a physics test and I get an A. You go, wow, this dude understands physics. I may not have a clue. Right. right. Now, God created physics. Spirit of God's in me. How come I don't know this stuff? Yeah. All right. Someone that doesn't have the spirit of God by testing the spirit, because I've always been like, God, I want to walk in your spirit and in truth, right? Because the other side's empty. Because that's what he that's what he asks of us to walk in spirit and truth. Right. To. Praise him to all those things in spirit and in truth. Yep. So then, when we test the test, uh, God's testimony, uh, the, the testimony that God would give us is: A, I love you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Um, I'm not like any earthly human being. You're not going to touch, taste, and feel with the natural. It'll all be with the internal. It'll all be the spirit man. Okay. So now, when we test God with those truths, we hear, feel God. We see God. When we see, when you look at the tree, you can look at the tree and not see God. You can be staring at barks and leaves. Mm -hmm. But how'd the bark get there? How'd the leaves get there? They grew there, right. How'd that happen? Even Jesus says the farmer or the planter doesn't know how the soil grows the seed. Only the dirt does. Mm -hmm. So you said just a, few, a minute ago that we have to like kind of test ourselves. As we grow and double check things here and there, you're right, because we're dirt. And from that dirt comes weeds, comes natural sin, comes the desire of this, 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 and this, whatever it may be. Now, as we talked last week, are you a sinner? Only if you fulfill sin. You're not an alcoholic if you never drink alcohol. <laughs> right? right? Then you got some people who are weak-minded and they go, well, I got to go to a meeting once a week or once a month and hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. If you confess that you're an alcoholic, then you still have a relationship with alcohol, even if it's psychological. Well, now, if you're done with alcohol and you're not interested or if you do have gotten to the point to where maybe at so one chapter of my life, I was out of control with it and today I'm within one or two and I'm good, I'm, I'm out. I'm good for a beer a week or a beer every two weeks. You're no longer an alcoholic. You no longer have the desire to become intoxicated. Right. You're not hiding life or problems in a substance. Be whatever substance it may be. Going back <clears throat> to that, going back to therapy, going back to, say, even anger management or whatever, mm -hmm. without praying and asking him to help you those things, you can go through those things and still be, come right back into that temptation of that alcohol addiction or the anger or that all those things would you agree that if temptation is there desire hasn't left yeah if I put I don't know um, green beans on a fish hook and try to catch a bass to my understanding a bass has no interest in green beans right, right? right. I can't lure it I can't desire it I can't get any I can't get that bass to react to them green beans mm -hmm. You put Norma's green beans in front of me, you get me react. <laughs> Give me a fork, spoon, something I can get it out of that bowl quickly with. Them are delicious. Okay? So if my desire hasn't left, then the addiction is still there. Right. Now, I haven't changed. No. Only change, good, true change is found when somebody has to suffer to get through it. You ever come off of something you were addicted to? Yeah. Was there suffering? Mm -hmm. Would you say change that in? Yes. There's a desire. There's a desire. Not dead for that, whatever it was. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for reinforcing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then the flip side of that, the change happens to the positive because of your experience with the positive. Right. You are now thoughts with the positive. Sure, that old desire, you know, of what, it, let's say, let's pick on alcohol again. It's such an easy target. I but used you can't to get, do it in your own willpower either. Oh, absolutely not. You can't. Because the we flesh is always to. needy. I've tried to do it with my own willpower. What did it take? It took more. It, it took, took something that you can't no. understand. Sometimes not even explain. Right. Would that also fall under the peace beyond all understanding? Yeah. Okay, so all these coming from the same place, right? So what's evidence of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> uh, peace, love, love joy, joy long-suffering. So if I just take love out of that, 
And then jump over to 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Okay, wait, love came from God? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how it got in there. Now you suddenly love your future more than your current. That's how you get out of your current situation. And you make a decision in the current not to carry whatever negative is in the current to the future because you can't take forward what you don't have in the current. Mm. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. If you don't possess it in the current time, you can't take it forward with you. Right. Now, what if the only thing you possess is past? Then you go forward and you relive your past, relive your past, yeah. relive your past. You don't break the past. cycle. Right. You should continue to dwell on it. You continue to let it consume you and define you. Right. And then you never move forward and you're miserable and you just hate everything. Now, you're... what's the fastest way to bring something to life? Speak life. Thought. Think. <laughs> the three creative energies. Think and then to speak. Thought, action, and word, right? Right. So thought recreates whatever we're thinking about in our thoughts. Right. So if our past sucked, why would we bring it up again? Unless Unless you're using it. It was a testimony. Right. Right. Because then you'd been tested. You were found to be whatever, true or not true, made those changes, which now it became your testimony. Mm -hmm. Which the enemy wants to kind of take away from you. Oh, the enemy will the take your testimony in a heartbeat, and he'll turn it back to his personal glory. Yeah. Especially if you end it with, well, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. You might as well kneel down, give praise. Him too much credit for that. And give him none. The world made me do it. No, it didn't. You did it, dummy. <laughs> you said yes to being stupid. I mean, what do they say that um, yesterday is a combination of everything you said yes to in your life. That's why yesterday starts with yes. And we all have, we all have choices. You are here today because of everything you said yes to in your past. That's why yesterday is called yes. It starts mm -hmm. with yes. Yeah. Yeah. You want to change your tomorrows? Say yes to something different. Yeah. How can you do that, though? Remember, we were talking about right here. How do you do that? Starts the mind change. You can't change your own mind. Well, we already decided that. You couldn't beat your own addiction. Oh, true. you can, but the desire didn't die. So you didn't beat the addiction. It's still there. The now you got accountability partners slapping you left and right. You call them on a Friday night. Oh, I'm going to get drunk tonight. Oh, come on, dude. You don't need that. Have coffee instead. Oh, but I can't sleep. I can't get this off of my mind. I can't get my thoughts clear. Yeah. So I'm going to have another beer, another shot. Why? Not because that's the answer. Yeah. Somebody told me that I used to drink all the time because I thought the answer was in the bottom of the bottle. I said, no, what's in the bottom of the bottle is a nap. And my body needs that. And because of what I won't release in my thoughts of my past... My yesterdays, I was still saying and agreeing to today as they were my reality for now. Because I wouldn't release that, I had to shut my thinker down. And the fastest way to do that is with some form of substance. I've been there. That's part of my testimony. Yeah. Filling with void, filling Why something. Why do you think me and him was sitting there going, we could, yeah, that, that, that's, our, that's what we said. And, and I think that, it, that applies with a lot of... Vets. Vets. Even, maybe even police officers. Whatever. If yeah, with civil that, service stress, people. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's interesting. I read something yesterday. They said, like, um, that when a police officer dies or a soldier dies in a line of duty, they just kind of know that's part of the job. But when a criminal gets injured or dies in the line of what they're doing, they're victims. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe we know what goes along with the job, but it's not like we agree to do that. Selfless service, though, right? Mm -hmm. Helping others. No greater, right here, 1 John 15, 13, no greater love than one man than this, to lay, lay down, down his, his life. life. For his friends. Mm -hmm. I've even, I've, even, I've lived by that when I was growing up. You know, I know that that was probably, I probably did a lot of stupid things, would have given my life for the, them, even though it might not have been the right thing, right, that they were doing or defend them. Well, keep in mind, when you got to defend something, it's like justification. You only justify what's not right. You only make righteous what's not righteous to begin with. Right. You ever hear somebody talking and they start with the, the, the words because or but? Yeah. You know, they're about to show their butt either way. On either word, they're going to show their butt. Because means I have to justify everything I just said. Mm -hmm. But means I'm preparing for an excuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
For who's greater, the one who's at the table or the one who serves? It is not the one who's at the table. But I am among you as one who serves. How much strength does it take to be in service to all those around you and never expect them to reciprocate it or understand what you're doing or why you're doing it? Hmm. When you give something a why, anything, you give it a why, you give it a meaning, okay? You remove all suffering from it. Think about it. You help out at the church, right? You ever gone out on a nasty weather day to do something? You're the only one out there doing it. Do whatever it is. Somebody. Painting or landscaping or pulling a car out of the ditch. You're the only one out there in the nastiest weather. Mm -hmm. And what's the why? I mean, you don't have to share the why, but the why is because they need my help. Mm -hmm. And I can. That's the why. Now, your toes may be cold. You may be getting rained on. Your vehicle's also in the ditch. You, you were going to take that $20, and instead of wasting it in gas to get this knucklehead out of the, out of the field, you was going to stop and get something to eat or maybe another pair of warm socks. But the why was I have an opportunity to help and serve and bless. That's my why, period. I'm going to do it. When you set your mind to run a half a marathon, it doesn't matter what your legs tell you, your stomach tells you. The why is because I said I'm going to do it. I'm a man of my word. And if I'm going to be counted as greater in anything, I want to be greater in my words, actions, and deeds. Not than the next, but than somebody who's not. Yeah. Somebody who's not. Because if my word is I will, and my actions are that I do, and my thoughts are I can't wait until I get to, then I'm showing love. But if it's I will, then talk to everybody about it. I do, and then brag about it. And I really don't freaking want to. Where's that love? Where's that heart? And where's the, where's the, the yeah, doesn't exactly. Mean, it's gone. It doesn't mean anything then. Or I'm only going to do it if you do it for me too. That's gone too. There's no love in that. That's greed. Pride, mm -hmm. lust. What about jealousy? Same thing. Yeah. Too much ego. Someone asked me the other day if I saw myself as a jealous person. No. Of what? Uh, of what? There's nothing I can be jealous of of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Jealous of my own wife? No. No. It, it's unhealthy. It goes nowhere good. Right. So greater? Who's greater than the other? What can you do that's greater than somebody else? I want to be known for something. I want to be known for loving people. Me too. This person has pure love. What does that look like? They have a heart who wants to work, wants to do, wants to be for others. Jesus says, if you love me, love my people. Not just people, dog, cat, chicken, rooster. The things that would make you annoyed. What about that? cockadoodle doo in the morning when the sun's coming up out on the farm? Well, I don't experience, but I've been there before. Yeah. And man, there's times I wanted to take a rifle and shut that noisy alarm off. That song we sang today. Oh, which one? Pat, was it Pat Barrett? Love Foundation. Foundation, I'll build my mm -hmm. love upon your trust. Foundation. Because I caught myself this last month having to go back, in a sense. What's my foundation? Built off. Yeah. There was a class I took back in the early 80s at a, at a Bible college. It was called Christian Foundations. And it's very interesting. If we just use love as our foundational value take something like forgiveness as a foundational value do and then do unto others as you want them to do unto you and love your neighbors yourself four simple areas two scripture two areas we put those together the new testament is a plethora of how to love somebody and what happens when you love somebody the old testament is a plethora of what happens when you don't that's why I scratch my head when I, everybody's like, ah, oh, study the Old Testament. We're all the way up to the book of Daniel. Why? Does the, is the Old Testament affecting you today? What could you be studying in the New Testament? There's good stuff in the Old Testament. Sure. There's great stuff over there. I'm not saying ignore it. From. But if you got questions about life today, I'm sure the New Testament will offer you a lot of the answers. Mm. And you also got Proverbs. You also got Psalms in there. You got Malachi. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff in the Old Testament. Don't ignore it. I've been back and forth. Mm -hmm. Fear of the Lord. <laughs> His wisdom. 
right? In Proverbs. Yeah. And yeah. And then you get in the New Testament, like lo- like. There are parts of the new, of the Old Testament that overlap perfectly into life. I mean, seriously, yeah. I love the part that somebody told me one time. They said, "Take Proverbs and read one chapter a day for a month." On the first, you read one. On the second, you read two. And then you have exactly 31 chapters. And it's just great growth material. It, is. it helped me this last... It's, yeah. And you where it hits you each... I mean, you're going to read Proverbs. You're going to read a book of Proverbs 12 times in a year. Nothing yeah. to matter with that. Yeah. But don't just get your food out of the book of Proverbs. Mm-hmm. It's like only eating McDonald's. Once in a while is one thing, but oh my goodness. Yeah. I've heard of people who the, the cancer doctor said it's due to the fast food you're ingesting. My dad was one of them. That was only one of those two burger, three, three burger stops he liked. <laughs> On his way to the office, stop every day, three to five burgers. A buck a piece, man, where do you get food for five dollars? Not in this, I'm okay, My dad. Dad's still the same way. Three and a half years of cancer and it killed him. Mm-hmm. But I like those burgers too. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> So do we learn by our experiences? We should. We should, but sometimes... Why is it that we do what we don't want to do, yet we don't do what we know we need to do? Right. That's not sin. That's hunger. That's my inner thoughts. That's my argument from inside out. That's the soul arguing with the spirit. Hmm. Do you ever have a two against one fight? Mm Mm-hmm. So if you had your flesh and your soul arguing with the spirit, who's going to win? Spirit. Uh, no? Well, I guess, yeah, no, that's too uh-uh. different, man. Now, if you have the soul and the spirit right, right. arguing against the flesh, who's going to win? That would be... The, uh, the yeah, spirit wins. Spirit wins yeah. But who makes the decisions? The soul. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Your fault. That's why it's called yesterday. The spirit didn't say yes. You did. The spirit told you to say yes, maybe. Or no. And that kind of t- takes me back to the sermon I watched on you want... The flesh to to walk in that spirit and truth is by letting the spirit lead the soul and the flesh. You got to have that. Yep. And control. a lot of times we say, "Oh Lord, Lord, let your spirit lead and guide me." Why? Because my flesh is guiding me right now, and I recognize I'm about to make some major mistakes. Yeah. Yep. Regret comes after the yeses. How can you regret something you didn't say yes to? Um, impossible. Absolutely impossible. Well, one of the, the street ministers that I went out with, praying for people, he's like, you wanna know why you're not seeing anything? You're in the flesh. You're in the flesh trying to pray for somebody. You're not gonna see the, in that, in that aspect, that's what he was talking about. He's seen a lot of people over there that were, you know, supporting the ministry. He said, you're not doing it through his spirit. You're doing it out of your flesh. You're not going to... You might see some things happen, but you're not going to... I would ask him to define that because that's very... And I'm going to use the word that somebody taught me, Christianese speak. Yeah. Tell me what that means. How can I I pray for you without my mind praying? I guess what I think I could relate to in a way, though, is not being knowledgeable truth through the word of God and then living that out. Maybe not knowing and... And, and getting the scripture and knowing it, then to be able to walk it out and do it, just by going by heat, you know. You're praying in the flesh and not praying in the spirit. I'm curious how this individual would know these things. Generally, if I hear somebody say they have a spirit of discernment, mm-hmm. I'm about to hear from a very complaining, contentious individual who's over opinionated. Yeah. So if I'm praying, you know, say, uh, where is it? If I pray in the spirit, my mind is in the spirit. Um, when I'm praying, that is my consciousness agreeing with my spirit for something in the spirit realm, mm-hmm. right? Right. Now, even if I'm praying out loud, now that's just engaging the flesh to agree with the consciousness, which is agreeing with the spirit. So... If the spirit, if, the, if, if, to make this thing understandable, I'm not saying this guy's wrong, but to make it understandable, and that's what bothers me a lot of times is people say stuff that really sounds cute in church, but you ask them to explain it and they have no idea what it means. Yeah. In spirit and in truth, 
I get that. When I'm praying, I pray in spirit and I pray in truth, right? The way I get my body and bring my body in line with the spirit and in the truth is I speak it, which is the most creative energy. Now, if I'm in my prayer closet or bedroom or, you know, out alone walking or running and I praying out loud, who's to hear me? God. Mm -hmm. But now I'm bringing an agreement, all three working in agreement with one. Right? Mm -hmm. Like the Spirit says. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, these three agree in one. Now aren't we being more like Jesus? Yeah. Back to greater. On the greater concept. No one is greater than those around them. We are all equal. God made each one of us out of an equal chunk of dirt. Breathed into us the oxygen into our nostrils. We became a consciousness. We became a living soul. From that point on, the world has offered us comparison models from the moment we started sucking oxygen until the moment we stopped sucking oxygen. And what we do is we stand there in the mirror and we offer ourselves up as a comparison model to what we see on TV, on the internet, our friends. Mm -hmm. And then we look at what God gave us and who he made us out of. And we go, that's not good enough, not big enough, not tall enough, too big, too much of this, too, too much of that. I'm not smart enough. I'm stupid. And then you use the I am power Christian. followed by something negative. Are we greater than the person around us? Absolutely not. And when a person feels that they're greater, they're stronger, they're more opinionated than those around them, that's the absence of the Holy Spirit. Right. Not of the in the person, hmm. only in the moment. And at that time, we're not being the church. And we're not loving our neighbor. And we're not loving our brother. And in that is a complete violation of the second greatest commandment that, God, that, that Jesus Christ gave us. Love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor as yourself. Now, truth, it points light to God. Most times. Mm -hmm. Most times. It doesn't make one truth greater than the next. Well, this is Daniel. I'm Ronnie. With Park Talks. Thanks for joining us this week. Be blessed, everybody.